graphing a system of two linear inequalities basic. So our instructions say we're going to graph the solution to the following system of inequalities. So a system means I have more than one inequality. Here I have a system of two. And I'm going to graph them on the same coordinate plane. So I'm going to look at this top inequality first. Um, it says y is greater than 3x plus 8. So it's already solved for y. My y is isolated or by itself over here on the left. Um, so I can go ahead and start with my graph. So next I'm going to line up some points or plot some points using my slope of 3 and my y-intercept of 8. So first I'm going to plot the y-intercept of 8. So I just need to count up on the y-axis till I reach positive 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then I'm going to use my slope of 3 here to just plot some more points on my grid to define my lines. So this would normally mean up 3 over 1 because as a fraction 3 is the same as 3 over 1. So this would be my rise or my up and down number. This is my run or my left and right number. So I normally would like to go up 3 over 1 but I can't go up 3 without going off the graph or the grid. So I'm going to have to reverse that instead of going up 3 over or to the right one, I'm going to go down three and back one. So one, two, three, down three, back one. Okay? Down three, back one. So in essence what I did, instead of trying to do a positive three, positive one, I did the equivalent of negative three negative 1 over negative 1. So down 3, backwards 1. So down 3, backwards 1. Down 3, backwards 1. Down 3, backwards 1. And I'm just going to line up a bunch of dots, plot a bunch of points. Then I want to draw in my boundary line of this inequality. So I go back up here, since I have a strictly greater than symbol, I'm going to put in a dashed line. So I'm just going to add some dashes here in between those dots. Okay, so there's my boundary line. Now I'm going to do some shading. Okay, since this is a greater than symbol, that means I want to shade above this line, okay? Now there's a couple of ways to look at this. One of them would be, since this is Y, you're going to look at the Y axis right here, okay? And I look right at the Y intercept, okay? This is where the line crosses the Y axis. So the greater than symbol means I want to shade the area that is above that dot. So above that dot would be up here, which means this entire side is what gets shaded. So I'm going to go ahead and use a highlighter here and just put some shading in. I'm just going to put some stripes and not spend the time to completely color it in. Okay, but just put some stripes to show my shading, okay? Um, then I'm going to go to this inequality and do exactly the same process, okay? So it's already solved for y, that's step one. Step two, use your slope of negative three and negative two to line up some dots or plot some points on our grid here. So this time my y-intercept is negative two, so I'm going to start here. And my slope is negative 3. That means down 3 over 1. Okay, my slope this time is negative 3 over 1, or down 3 over 1. So down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1. And then I'm going to reverse that, change the sign on both of these, okay, 
and go up three, back, backwards one, to just get a few more dots. Up three, back one, up three, back one. Okay, so here I have my second set of dots lined up. And again, I'm going to put in a dashed line because I have strictly less than. There's no equal to involved with this. So I'm just going to add some dashes now in between those dots. Okay. Now I have to put in the shading for this line. Okay, so this time I'm shading less than. So again, here's my y-intercept for this line at negative 2. I want to shade less than or below that dot. Okay, so that means that I'm shading this entire side right, to this side of that line, and I'm going to leave everything to this side of that line unshaded. So I'm going to use a different color here um, and just put in some more stripes. This time I'm going to use pink and just kind of go in between the yellow ones that I did before. But I have to go all the way over to that second line, okay? Now, in essence, what happened, what's happened here is I have four wedges in my graph, okay, created by these two intersecting lines. Now, this wedge, the top wedge, okay, that was my yellow inequality. This was my pink one, okay? So, this top wedge here that's completely yellow. There's no pink in there. Okay? Any points in this wedge or this section are solutions to this inequality, the top one, but not the bottom one because there's no pink in there. Down here in this wedge where I just have pink stripes, okay, this wedge I'm going to go ahead and fill it in all pink because I just had pink stripes here. This wedge points in here are solutions to this inequality, but not the top one, okay? Just the pink one. Now, over here, this is the region we're interested in. These points that have pink and yellow, they're solutions to my entire system. So this region is my solution region for the entire system because that's the wedge, right, or the area, the region in my coordinate grid that had the pink and yellow, right? It satisfies, those points satisfy both of these inequalities. This area over here that had no coloring or shading, these points Aren't a, aren't a solution to either inequality, okay? Not even one of them by itself. But the solution to the entire system is all of the points in this area or this section of the grid, not including the points on the lines themselves. That's what the dashed line means. It shows us the boundary but the points on the lines itself, when they're dashed, are not part of the solution. When you do these problems in Alex, uh, you're only going to click or shade the portion of the graph that is the solution to the entire system, your overlap, or the part that right, would have your two colors, um, not any regions that are solutions to only one, right? If we want the solution to the entire system, we're really only interested in the region that's a solution to both.